Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn the difference between morph and morpheme. Actually, this is the best lecture about these confusing terms, after watching this lecture, you won't need others, but before I explain it, if you are new to my channel then please like the video and subscribe the channel. Let's first learn a morpheme. It can be defined as, a morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit in a language. It cannot be further divided without losing or altering its meaning. What does it mean? Simply, it means that a morpheme is nothing but it is just a smallest meaningful unit in a language and which cannot be further divided. By further division means that if we try to divide it so it will either lose its meaning or change its meaning. Actually, it can be a word itself or a part of a word that contributes to its meaning or function. I think still you are not getting the point, but before I make you understand, let me tell you the main characteristics of a morpheme then you will understand it. The first main point of a morpheme is, abstract representation. This is the main point that morphemes are abstract and represent meaning rather than physical form. By abstraction means that morphemes are conceptual units of meaning or function, rather than concrete forms. Simply, you can say a single morpheme can have multiple physical forms depending on the linguistic context, but the underlying meaning or function remains constant. You should keep in mind that morpheme is abstract concept and that abstract concept is represented through different forms. The next point is, meaning consistency. This is another important point that the meaning or function of a morpheme does not change based on how it is pronounced or written. Actually, a morpheme carries a stable and recognizable meaning that doesn't change even when a word it appears in changes. Sometimes a word or a part of a word is produced or written differently but the meaning remains the same. You should not be confused by this point, let me just remind you, as you have seen sometimes a morpheme which shows plurality is pronounced, is, and sometimes, s. But you should remember that how different you pronounce it but refers to plurality. So, this is also one of the main points. Cannot be subdivided. This is one of the traits of a morpheme that it cannot be broken down further into smaller meaningful units. Simply, it is a smallest meaningful unit of a meaning which we cannot further divide. If we divide it so it will either lose its meaning or give us another meaning. I think you are not getting the point just look at these examples. Look at the word, cat. Actually. Cat is a free morpheme that can stand alone and it refers to a type of animal. Simply, you can say when someone utter this word so he talks about an animal. Basically, the word represents an animal cat. So, the word, cat, has one morpheme because it refers to one cat. Look at the word, walked, it had two morphemes. Actually, walk, is free morpheme and it refers to the action of moving on foot. And the second is, ed, which indicates the past tense of the verb. I think the idea is not clear, don't worry let me just explain morph then you will understand it. It can be defined as, a morph is a physical realization of a morpheme. Morphemes are the smallest units of meaning, and morphs are their specific manifestations in speech or writing. What does it mean? Simply, it means that a morph is nothing but it is a concrete representation or a form of a morpheme. Actually, as we have talked about a morpheme that it is abstract in nature. But when we represent that abstract meaning in concrete form like in speech or in writing, then it is called a morph. I think you are not getting the point just look at these examples. Observe the word. Unhappy. This word has two morphs, one is, un, which means, not, and the second morph is, happy, which refers to the feeling of pleasure. Basically, for feeling of pleasure and for a negation two separate morphs are used. But look at the word, sheep, this word has two morphemes and, one morph. Actually, 
This word itself is singular and also plural but for showing plurality there is no separate morph but there is only one morph. Therefore, this word has one morph and two morphemes. I think you are not getting the point. Look at another example, books. This word has two morphemes and also two morphs. Basically, here the word, book, has one morph, and for showing the plurality there is given another morph which is the word, s. So, you can see this is called morph. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture but please don't forget like and subscription to my channel. Thank you.